Hey, good afternoon and welcome to another episode of the Business of Business podcast. We've got some awesome guests today. Uh, we're going to have Don and Dr. Dina Ortiz on. They have just written a book, 31 Cents to 43 Countries. And I can't wait to jump in. I've already got uh, my own page full of notes here. But before we get uh, kind of off in the book, uh, why don't y'all tell y'all have such an interesting background. Why don't y'all tell us a little bit about each one of you, please? Oh, well, thank you. We appreciate thank you. it, Roy. Thanks for having us on today. Absolutely. We're excited to talk with your audience. So we do have an interesting background. I actually started uh, in the music business as a street musician. So if you read our book, 31 Cents to 43 Countries, you'll know that I actually landed in the tenderloins of San Francisco at the age of 18. And if you know anything about San Francisco, that is not the best part of town to be landing in. Uh, but I worked my way out, um, ended up going to uh, City College there. I actually went to San Francisco to go to Berkeley, but uh, the tuition was too expensive as an out-of-state student. So oh, okay. in between my City College classes, I went on to Fisherman's Wharf, and I became a street musician. Oh, and wow. I actually started learning a lot about business as a result of being a street musician. Um, yeah. Um, I met Don. Uh, I left, San, left San Francisco to San Diego, started my first country, country rock band, and um, left there. We were picked up by an agent out of Minnesota very early on, and I lost a guitar steel player um, when I was on the road, my first road trip up through northern uh, U.S. and Canada, and uh, came back home to Phoenix to find another musician, and I met Don. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, it, it was great. I actually met Dina through her voice first. Um, I was doing uh, production work here in Arizona for concerts and events, and uh, my lighting director friend at the Celebrity Theater said, I've got this gal that's got an incredible voice. She could probably utilize your talent, and I think you guys would be a good fit. And I kept on saying no, 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 and then about a month later, he brought a cassette tape back then. Oh, uh, yeah. And, uh, that's how old we are. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I heard the cassette, and I, I thought, wow, this is Bonnie Raitt meets Melissa Etheridge, uh, you know, uh, type voice. And it really struck me, and I thought, yeah, let's let's arrange that meeting. And here we are 31 years later wow. actually celebrating. So, you know, and who would have thought 30, 43 countries on top of that? Right. That's, <laughs> well, that's such an awesome story. It's a, it's, a, it's a fun start. And when he joined my band about five weeks into it, he said, you know, I, I really think, um, and I'm not going to give it all away, it's in the book, but I think it's time probably for you to move on. Why don't you come with me? We'll start a band together. And literally by the time we left, I think it was Wyoming was our, was our last stop um, yeah. before I left uh, my band and, and uh, hooked up with Don. Um, literally, by the time we got to him, his home state of Delaware, we literally had 31 cents in our pockets. Oh, wow. And that's how we started our business. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, and that's what I was. That's how we got the title. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I was going to ask you is that it's an interesting title. So, uh, now that we know how you got that. Well, if, if y'all don't mind, I mean, if you want to do uh, an intro to the book, that's fine. If not, we can just jump right in. Like I said, I have got a, um, I've already got my list of questions. So, uh, do you want to give a little intro into the book? Sure. So, what, uh, so um, a couple of years ago, Don uh, started um, poking me to write a book. And I said, you know, Don, he, he kept saying, this, you know, we have an interesting story. We've seen so much of American history, yeah. and we've done it, you know, as regular people. You know, we're not diplomats. We're not famous musicians. But we have really seen and experienced and been part of American history all over the world as a result wow. of our music. Yeah. I'm working with the Department of Defense, U.S. State Departments, and corporate um, entities. And he said, I think people would be interested. And I kept saying, no, nobody cares. Nobody's interested. You know, we're just regular people. He finally got me to do it. Um, so I wrote a book, a book um, and the purpose was to use our stories as a gateway uh, to share and teach business. And as okay. you know, I have a doctor. Along the way, I got my MBA and my doctorate in business. And I'm a professor, a college professor. So we really marry, we start with stories, and then we marry that with um, business theories, application that anybody can use, managers, um, currently marketing. Um, if you're a small business owner, entrepreneur, these are really great tips uh, that anybody can use and apply. Right. So hopefully you'll, it's an enjoyable book, right? The stories are enjoyable, but we also give you some takeaways. Plus, it's yeah. not your normal business book. Right? Yeah. You know, you're actually going in, into very foreign lands, 
Uh, a lot of the time where it is a chaotic event that we turn into a successful moment mm -hmm. that's drastic, uh, sometimes very dangerous. Uh, you know, so you're, it's not your average storytelling. And then the takeaways that we have after each story that you can apply, like Dina said, whether you're an entrepreneur, a CEO, or a team management group, you're able to apply these today. And that's the most important thing with what's happening today. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, and just a little bit more background. Y'all were actually work did some work with the Department of Defense and I guess the USO playing musical gigs for uh, the troops and I guess the uh, diplomats overseas. Is that correct? Right. We picked up in 1992. We auditioned here in Arizona. I think we were one of three bands that they auditioned here and they decided to, they told us that night we were going. Um, it was Armed Forces Entertainment and so it was Desert Storm 1 and as a result of that and getting actually lost in Singapore, uh, we able we were able to create a 15-year relationship with them, and then that wow. transferred over into a relationship with the U.S. State Department, where we became ambassadors of goodwill uh, through cultural exchanges. And then when I got my doctorate, uh, State Department picked this up and asked me to start giving lectures and teaching abroad regarding small business ownership and entrepreneurship, which has really you know been a joy. So now we, we get to do both, and it's, right. you know, we still play music, we're yeah, still... No, yeah, we're actually, also, we get to write a song for, for that tour, and we actually have artists from their countries join us. So you're joining cultures, you're building relationships, you're creating long-term relationships, maybe at, at, at the table that normally wouldn't have happened, uh, all because of what we're doing, and people having the foresight to put that together and see that we can really connect with people, because after all, it is about touching people right right and uh we're all pivoting and turning right now e even in a virtual mode we've been doing virtual you know um such, uh, yeah work yeah. for over 25 30 years and actually dean is one of the first pioneered online professors oh, okay. back when they first started doing that in fact she was getting her doctor degree while we were on tour in like in afghanistan oh, wow. yeah, teaching in armenia or azerbaijan and and and, and Rhea, I mean, it's been amazing to, to know what we've been able to do. And we're helping people actually manage a, a better work-life balance. Yeah. So all of this chaos, virtual population, this is not new to us. We've been doing this for such a long time. So we think, again, we us share that value information as we become more senior in our careers. We're so happy to get back and help anybody we can. Yeah, and that's evident. I mean, uh, y'all had a great... Uh, great mission you know helping deliver entertainment to the troops but also to, uh, kind of built you know music is the international language i think everybody oh. no matter where you're from so i mean you know joining cultures through music uh, what an awesome life y'all been able to live yeah we've been very blessed uh, even happy. as of uh, uh, june 14th of flag day this past year we actually have our name on a uso monument along the uh, alongside Lucille Ball, Mickey Rooney, Jane Russell, and Ann Miller. Oh, no. um, and it's just been amazing. We would have never thought our name, the Dina Preston Band, would be on a USO monument, let alone the only USO monument in the world. Official. Wow. Official. We just found that out, too. Oh, that is great. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's jump into this. Uh, I mean, because... The, Y'all found your passion through music, and music is your passion. But one of the first things that y'all talk about is, you know, finding your internal compass. And, you know, I hear this from so many people. They're in jobs they hate. You know, I hate to get up on Monday. I've been fortunate all my life that, you know, I, I like to get up on Mondays because I've had good jobs. But, you know, finding that internal compass, your passion, uh, talk a little bit about that. Sorry. I think it's important, especially if you start a small business or entrepreneurship, or even if you're going to go to work with somebody else. I tell my students, you have to find out what you're good at. And if you have a passion for something, even if you have the talent for it, you will it will drive you, and it will drive you to make you better. So, right. you know, Don and I both had a natural talent for music. I had a natural talent for singing early, but I still wasn't good enough to be pro, and I learned that when I got a circuit. So I knew I had I knew I knew I needed to enhance that talent. Right. So when I started getting no's, not good enough, this is why for people professionals in the industry, I went and found somebody who could teach me how to professionally sing so I could really hone in on that talent. Right. As a result of that, I have maintained my voice and have become a 
a strong voice for 30 years. I've never lost it. I know how to sing. Same with Don as a guitar player. Um, he started a little earlier than I did. I started in my teens. He started it. Wow. Yeah. Um, I was actually a Woodstock. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So you, you can find that out in the book, what that experience was like and why it made such an impression on me from that moment on uh, to be the guitarist and performer I am today. And I think uh, because of being in the music business is having a wide palette. I yeah. think, too, um, you know, Don and I learned very differently. So I enjoyed reading and then I enjoy applying. I mean, I'm, I'm your textbook, you know, um, professor. Yeah. Don, on the, other hand, on the other hand, really listens and learns um, through music because he's a musician, right? right? So my recommendation is to find what your passion is, find what your talent is, and then continue to go to school and or learn through books, through videos, whatever it is, whatever your yeah. learning modality is, to continue to hone that skill. So you're at the top of your game. And when you're at the top of your game and you're really good at what you can do, even if you get a no, even if, even if you get a door slammed in your face, you're going to keep going right. because you have to keep going. I don't know how else to describe it. I actually talk about it in my book. My dad used to come out when he would visit in San Francisco to watch me perform on the street. And he would just shake his head. Like, why are you out here 10 hours a day making so little money? You're crazy. And it was like, yeah, dad, but you don't understand. This is not about the money. This right. is about the passion that I have for music. I'm going to do it regardless if you give me money. Yeah. My job is to figure out how to make money doing it. Yeah, and I and think we were both really good at doing the business side of it, too. Okay. That was a big part. You know, there's a lot of artists and people in the industries that are really great at their talent, but they, right. don't, get the they, don't, they don't get the business part of it. And yeah. That's anything you do. Yeah. Not just music. Yeah, you hear so many horror stories about artists that, you know, get taken advantage of because they don't understand that business aspect. So that is good. And, you know, finding your passion, it, it does help you um, if you believe in it. When you do get those no's, you're able to keep pushing on. And then also, you know, I've been a lifelong learner myself. And so even if you're at the top of your game, things change so much that you oh really gosh. have to be committed to <laughs> right. staying Don't on top of it. Yeah, staying out in front of it because, you know, um, well, I guess, you know, while well, IBM has been able to uh, get into computers, but like the punch card business, if they hadn't adapted, you know, how busy would they be today uh, trying to survive on the punch card business? So, you know, you have to be able to adapt, and I think that's where the learning. Um, and we're so lucky at this environment, you don't have to go to college or to no. uh, an institution no. to learn. You got There's so much available, you know, even on YouTube and on the Internet that we're very fortunate that we can always – and blogs. I mean, I listen to a lot of blogs and podcasts and get a lot of great information. You bet. And there's a lot. And for those that maybe um, are in their careers already and don't want to go back to a university, you know, community, local community colleges with occupational divisions and business is a great and inexpensive way right. to do a deep dive on some of the things that you're interested in. And right. you, can, you get out not only with information, but a lot of times you can get out with certificates that even if you don't go into business for yourself, you put those certificates on your resume and organizations are looking at those kinds of things yeah we know collectively small businesses hire more than corporations do yeah you know and it's funny uh it, you, you can probably understand this with your travel but i, I spoke with the guy a couple of weeks ago that he took six months off when he was younger and traveled africa and some other countries uh, overseas and there, <clears throat> you know everybody told him this is a career killer he had a really good job but they told him it was a career killer you'll never recover and you know, it was just doom and gloom. But he said when he came back and started applying, whenever he would go out and um, to interview, he said they only wanted to talk about his travel and all that extracurricular right. stuff, not just his education or his background. So, you know, those life experiences right. are very important, no matter if we're in, and even if you're an uh, entrepreneur, solopreneur, when you go out and meet with the prospect. You need something. Oh, I do. I like to try to connect with everybody. So instead of just yeah. talking about my product or my service, it's like if we have these life experiences, we can try to connect with other individuals. And I think that's very important. That's such a good, uh, such a good uh, recommendation, word because you're right. You have to find common ground first. Right. And most cultures do that. Um, I tend to say that in, in the U.S., a lot of times we're handing a business card and looking for a deal before we 
you know, kind of, you just kind of see where that common ground or is. Or even build the relationship. Right. 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 So there's yeah. a trust bond there. Yeah. You know, so uh, a way in Europe or Asia, you know, the way you handle hand somebody a business card can make or break a deal instantly. Yeah. yeah. Even though they'll have dinner with you and do the whole conversation, you've already ruined it. Uh, so those are things that we also put in our book that people understand when you go to other cultures, other countries, or the way you deal with things can make or break and even create a long lasting relationship yeah, that people yeah. really. A friendship. Friendship. Yeah. yeah. And I think even if we're doing uh, business with local people, you know, we really need to in, uh uh, look them up we need to get the information so we know who we're dealing with but when you travel overseas i'm sure y'all can attest that that goes probably 10 steps even further because cultures can be so different it doesn't make one right or wrong it just means that we are in their culture all of a sudden we have to be respectful of what their tr yes. traditions are exactly and you know right that's a great word because i think respect but if you're respectful, like that will get you everywhere. Right, exactly. So another thing that y'all talk about is being purposeful. And um, if, if you could expound on that just a little bit more. Sure. I think uh, being purposeful, and I think a um, good example of this is when we were flying into Afghanistan. And um, we noted nothing detoured the pilot um, from getting up in because the itself in Afghanistan when it is can be very tricky. Uh, they actually call it the toilet bowl. Um, oh wow. Land the reason why is that literally uh, people getting shot with snipers in the mountains. But remember we were going in at the time when Desert Storm Two was on the it, it was at the yeah. well at the beginning a year later, yeah. about a year yeah. later. And they literally do a toilet bowl that's so you're going straight down. So you've got all those deep forces pretty much fitting you. And no matter what was going on, no matter what was, you know, shaking in the plane, those pilots had laser focus on a purpose and nothing to work from that. And that, when you have problems, when you have issues, when you have challenges like we're, we're having right now with COVID, that keeps you so focused. You know what your end game is? It doesn't matter what wall you hit. Yeah. You go over it, you go under it, you go around it, you, you become water. You right. figure out a way through it. And so that really is um, the lesson I took for that chapter. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. is. Yeah. Plus and the fact that we were off the radar. <laughs> right. Yeah. The other thing, uh, I love the, the power of joy. And, um, you know, that's one message. Uh, try to live it, but I also try to, you know, give this to others is that we can't put it others in charge of our joy because if we let other people upset us or make our day turn bad you know that's really on us about how we react to others so talk a, a little more about you know kind of incorporating the power of joy so, uh, we used two examples in our book uh, one was from the island of Kiribati which most people don't know where that's at but it's in the South Pacific and um, we just noticed that, that there. If you've been to Kiribati, there's there's some definitely some challenges there. Uh, the, the water is starting to recede. They're starting to have problems with um, fishing, and that's how they make their living. Of course, um, the island is a, a bit overcrowded. A lot of um, the islanders have to actually leave the island when they uh, mature to find work elsewhere, so they can't stay on the island. But there is a sense of joy on the island. They laugh. They love music. Their their joyfulness, and no matter the challenges. They, were, they overcame them with joy and laughter. Yeah. Um, the second and third had have to do with the military. One was we were at the theater um, and we're doing a, well, I've done a show for the military. We always bring the generals up um, to kind of you know, have a little fun with them. Yeah. And the big shtick back then was to have the generals sing with me. I Man, I feel like a woman. And so the generals would get up in front of their platoon singing, Man, I Feel Like a Woman, which was <laughs> a, a big song. You should have seen the platoons and, you know, the privates. Oh, they're and the they're falling on, out of their seats. Yeah. <laughs> right. And the generals, you know, the, the generals understood that for a moment in time, they needed to allow their soldiers, their Air Force um, personnel to relax, right? right? They're out in the theater constantly you know, going, 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 being purposeful, but there's a time when you have to relax, and leaders have to be able to relax themselves. 
Right. You know, at the appropriate time, of course. Yes. But they yeah. need to be able to have that, uh, that fun in the sun. So and speak. release. Yes. You yeah. know, uh, that, that for that moment, there's no yes, sir, how high, sir. Uh, also, they lose their nickname because everybody in the military has a nickname. Uh, they represent their country, their county, their state. It all in that moment, you know, they understand why, you know, we're bringing music from home. And when you're creating that moment with a leader, it's just outstanding because they'll remember that in the field. Right. We've right. had people actually tell us, you know, we were taking on live fire and here we were laughing about the general saying, man, I feel like a woman. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You know, I think as leaders, even in the business world, we, we have to learn not to take ourselves so serious. And uh, we need to be able to have a right. little fun. And, and like you said, it's, it has to be the appropriate time. But we, you know, we can cut up and we can be human. We can be fallible. We need to be all people know that we are those things, so we might as well own up to it. You know, we're not hiding it, we're not hiding our uh, people aren't gonna not think that we're perfect if we don't, you know, act right. right. And I, I agree with you, Ryan. I think the third story, which probably is my favorite, is the one we were giving a uh, concert um, in Oregon to a group of veterans and Marines that were getting ready to be uh, shipped out to Afghanistan the next day, and we know that. A large number of them did not come back. Yeah. But that night, you would never have guessed what they were facing because they got up on stage with us like do, and they were doing the uh, risky business slide across the stage. They were just having oh, wow. so much fun, which taught me, for me, that's like they're living in the moment. They're not taking one second for granted. Right. They don't have time to be sad, time to be scared. They're going to make the very last and it was have. the full platoon. Yeah, it was. It wasn't yeah. like four or five guys. Yeah. It was the full platoon on stage. Interacting, dancing, cracking up, cracking up, cracking the audience up yeah. because they were having so much fun. Yeah. I mean, we should be No? Right, Enjoy right. Everyone. Yeah, yeah, we definitely should, even in, uh, you know, even in uh, that non combat environment because we never know. You never know. And I actually, uh, uh, there's a guy that makes a coin that I carry that says, you know, this could be your last day. We never know. And I don't carry it as a downer or derogatory. I think I carry it as a reminder that, you know, we need to live every day for everything. And uh, we don't, you know, we always want to put things off. Well, I'm going to wait to do this, wait to do that. There's never a perfect time. Just like starting a business. Well, I'm going to wait till the environment changes. You know what? There's never going to be a perfect time to step out and do it you got to do your research and, sure. and have Absolutely. your base but at some point you just got to jump out there so that's why we think no means next opportunity <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> well and there's a uh, actually a guy wrote a book it says getting to know because to the no no because what he was saying was if I get to know, then I know that you're not interested and I can move on. But this may be yeah, or, right. you know, kind of wasting that time. So sometimes getting to know, <clears throat> excuse me, is, is the better, faster answer so we can move on to that next opportunity. That's correct. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. In fact, we talk about that with millennial buyers now that are in the marketplace. And oftentimes, um, and I've worked with millennials, I work with a multi diverse group, age group of um students, um, colleagues, and clients. And one of the challenges with millennials is they don't like to pick up the phone and talk. Right. Or they don't like to deliver bad news. They yeah. have a problem delivering bad news. Yeah. But I try to share with them that we're okay with no. Yeah. You know, we don't take it personally. It right. could be the wrong buying cycle. We could be the wrong product. We're fine with that. But tell us. Yeah. Because if you don't, we're going to keep dialing you. We're going to keep bugging you. Right. Because that's what we do. Right, right. So another thing that y'all should know a lot about is the uh, having order in chaos. And especially if y'all have been overseas in some of these uh, war zones, then, you know, how do we uh, how do we keep order and not let chaos take us over? Right. And we experience that a lot, um, I think. And it's very easy to get pulled, too, especially when there's a lot going on. So, yeah. again, I think this was our example in Egypt when we were coming off like, in Egypt and um, the local children will just, and this happens in many countries, the local children will just kind of zero in on you to help you 
with your bags. When we used to travel, we would travel with up to 60 pieces of, of equipment and gear. Oh, wow. And there may, may only be four of us. That includes our seat base and all of our sound equipment and, and musical instruments. Yeah. So imagine maybe 10 or 15 children under foot. You're trying to count your cases. You're trying not to be pulled away to make sure nobody takes anything. Um, and, you know, a lot of distractions after you've distraction. had a 17-hour flight, yeah, too. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're tired. tired. Um, what happened was that our um, our envoy uh, met with me, and he didn't really ask him to show his credentials. We just, you know, he looked the part. So he said, I need to take Dina, I need to take everybody's passports, and I need to drive across to another area to get all the equipment approved uh, before we bring it into the um, So there I go, and Don's looking up at me going, I just got my wife off the band. I don't know. With all of our passports, right? And yeah. We didn't really know him. Right, right. And we. And it happened so quickly. Really. Good. Uh, all of a sudden, I went into like that shock, like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah, I right. just left with those guys and our equipment, our passport, and just that that started happening. Don't you know? Policemen started asking for passports on the sidewalk. Oh my gosh! The second she drove away, so yeah. you have to read that one because I'll tell you that's how we got out of it and and how we made it a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what we learned from that experience in terms of uh, order and chaos is that now we have pre meetings with our positions when we're touring. So we actually put things on um, on the board, things that we've experienced, what they might experience, and any questions that they might have, or anything that they their own travel experience has shared. So we pre plan, right? And so that really helps with chaos because if you're going into an experience you might not be prepared for, you might have a little history that you can draw from. So right. that's really important. Yeah. And we, we've yeah. also we've also learned to assign tasks and roles to our musicians. So when we travel, um, this team is going to take care of counting equipment. This team, Don and I are going to be handling the client. This team is going to be handling this. So we start delegating responsibilities for things that that we know that are going to occur. Okay. We not might not be able to see the outcome of what the exact issue is, but we know that we're going to have to get suitcases off and get them through. Right. We know we're going to have to deal with the client. Yeah. So that really helps. So pre planning executing the plan in teams and then following up making sure historically that you're following up again because when you do that you can add to the history for the next tour so we've found that really helps again with creating some sort of order yeah and i think that goes a long way with business that uh, you know we need to create a plan it's not uh, set in stone it's flexible it's a li- it should be a living document but you know kind of right. the old saying is that you know you have to have a plan and you have to work that plan and um because as an entrepreneur, solopreneur, somebody starting out, a lot of times what I see is they live in uh, they live in chaos and they begin to think that's where they reside all the time. They give up the planning portion and then two things usually happen. Either uh, at some point the business is so out of control it, it crashes or they crash as a person. So I think that's very yeah. important. Yeah, I think that's very important to try to bring order to, you know, try to keep as much. It's not always going to be perfect. I get that. But, no, no, yeah, you no. know, we, Gina, in fact, we meet regularly all the every time, morning, every actually. morning about it. Yeah. Um, we're constantly trying to make the wheel better. Right. It, it's changing. Like you said, it should be a living document. It's a living, breathing business. Right. And it's changing, especially in a COVID environment. Right. Times are for the week and when you pop out. Know, how we're going to execute them, and if there are issues, we address the issues, and then we put that, you know, back into our history so that we can use it. But one thing I want to share with you, your listeners, I think with um, a lot of the sound can be really good. That can be really creative people. But they have all these ideas going on in their head. Right. That oftentimes they get them confused, so they don't know how to focus. Which goes back to the idea of why you have to take one plan, the process, and the roadmap, right? And you can do that by you right. do that, a business plan is a business plan. You can use the same step to execute whatever other business you may have to be on the pipeline. Start with one, set that down, learn how to do it well, and then you can add the other. I know part of your podcast is growing your businesses, and that's great. Right. Exactly. So, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about relationships earlier, but, you know, uh, it's important that we leverage relationships. I I think uh, 
referrals, I, I think of relationships as referral opportunities and it, it's more to that. I mean, we have to have relationship to get the business and start out, but also it's the, uh, re referrals are usually the cheapest, um, acquisition of new customers. So if we really leverage those relationships we have out there, you know, we have to build them first, but then we need to know how to leverage those. You bet. And Don is absolutely great at that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I've been really blessed. I, I don't know what it is, um, but we met a, a, a person actually in Azerbaijan. And uh, from there, that relationship, uh, they went to a new post um, from the U.S. Embassy to Budapest. And, and next thing I know, we're getting an email. Do you want to come and rock Budapest? And at the same time, they said, we'd like to have Dina do lectures entrepreneurship uh and american corners and speak at those and so that that created another opportunity for us and then from there uh he went on to his next post to fiji and caribus and said how would you like to come to fiji and caribus and at that time it was going to be tonga too uh so we've been really blessed and that's through long-term relationship and i think part of um, creating those long relationships is you definitely have to be authentic where you have to be who you are, but more. So that's, that's a gift. Secondly, you have to provide an outstanding quality product or service. It's not enough just to create the relationship. The relationship is partly based on you being authentic and creating um, some commonalities that we talked about in friendships. But right. if you don't have an outstanding product, you can, have, they'll be your friends, but they're not going to have you back. Yeah. Right, right. So sometimes we forget that. It's not just about the relationships. You've got to have a product that stands head and tails above your competition. And so you can actually leverage your relationships for that as well. Talk to them. What worked, what didn't work, you know, in a way that's positive for both of you so that right. they know you are always working on your behalf. The other thing Don does really effectively is he's got a background in production, not just as a musician. So whenever we work with our clients, he pretty much gives them free advice uh, before the event, during the event, and after the event in terms of production and setting things up and getting things ready. Because most clients don't understand about production yeah. in our industry. And it's very stressful for them. So making it turnkey where they can actually enjoy their event yeah. is is everything. Because then, then you're giving them peace of mind. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, when you plan those big events, it's like, you know, you hold your breath. So when you know that everything is going to come off, all right. And, and that's the other thing about relationships is, uh, in like the guy that y'all followed there, uh, he had confidence that you could deliver what you said you were going to deliver. And so, right. you know, it's like, it's, you know, you can maybe find the same product somewhere else, but there's always that surprise factor. Are they going to show up? Can they deliver what they say? And so that is the great thing about, uh, you know, but we have to be sure to work to stay on top of that as well. We can't let anything slide just because we do have a good relationship with somebody. Exactly. Your yeah. brand is everything yeah. and your product is everything. And then having the relationship to balance it, it's, yeah. it's an A+. Plus. Right. That's, that yeah. wins all the way. Yeah. In fact, we almost made it to do the class. You know, they put this big tour together for us. And, you know, there was a lot of money invested in that tour. And um, we had a, a, a dust storm, a big boot coming to Arizona and grounded the plane. Oh, wow. And we, we had to leave that night, or we were going to get to Budapest to do our performance on Sunday. And we were getting to know it every stop at the airport. And we just kept, again, being purposeful. We just yeah. kept pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing until we figured out a way to get there. Yeah. We actually landed in Budapest at 10 a.m. for a 12 o'clock noon performance. Oh, wow. Literally went from the airport to the hotel, took a shower, put on our stage clothes, and drove right to the right to the. Uh, performance and a concert. how many <laughs> how many bands do you know that would be willing to do that they'd be complaining how tired they are they have to stay up all night yeah our musicians who work for us know that our clients they're important and we, we take deliver. care of them but yeah. none of us are going to have food on the table if we don't eat what their needs are right so everybody mm -hmm. wants to yeah uh, so uh Let's we'll follow up with the uh, the very last thing is gratitude. And um, I think going through this uh, pandemic, I think a lot more people because I'm just going to say I hear it a lot more about people trying to practice more gratitude. But also um, let's talk about 
we can talk about the gratitude for the big things, but also taking stock of the little things that, you know, we're, we're thankful for our health and for our income and for all of that. But it's great for entrepreneurs, especially to stop and think about those small victories every day, you know, not only uh -huh. think about the things that went wrong yesterday, but take stock in like, you know what, these five things I pulled off yesterday or my team did or the company did and, uh, you know, really be thankful for that as well. Because, well, I look at it as driving our attitude if we're only focused on what went wrong yesterday. And let me just take a step back and say we need to think about the whole day because we do. If something went bad, can we fix it? Can we put a plan in place? Is there a process to fix that? But we also have to really celebrate the victories every day. Absolutely, Roy. And I'll tell you, when the pandemic hit as a, as a live, you know, we make our, our um, income by live performances. We're a live performance fan. We're, we're keynote speakers. And so that mm -hmm. means live performances. Um, everything was canceled after we had the best two months that we've had years. I mean, wonderful. And then the pandemic, hit and literally everything we needed to book was wiped out. Oh. And like many people. Yeah. So Don and I had to come together and we had to figure out, okay, what what can we do? Was it a positive? During that time, sometimes just waking up in a great cup of coffee where I could go, wow, and go sit outside of my patio where it's beautiful and I never have time to do that because we're so busy all the time. Yeah. You can enjoy serenity for a change. Yeah. And, right. and Don was great about that. He's like, you know, I'm I'm freaking because everybody everything's canceling, yeah. right? And he's like, Dina, grab coffee and come on out here and sit on the porch with me. And I'm looking at my beautiful lawn and thinking, wow, we're safe. Our families are safe. Everybody's good right now. Everybody's, you know, we're working at least. So yeah. in, in other ways, we're still working. Um, you're right. Sometimes you got to look at the very little things. Hey, we got a phone call today about a gig that's going to happen in 221. Um, we connected with an agent who wants to send us to South Korea maybe next summer. We're doing a rock and roll review, American rock and roll review. Wow. Not coming in right now, but look at the prospects that we have maybe yeah. from now. Yeah. Uh, or we're going to be on a podcast with Roy today. Absolutely. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. We're, we're, we're grateful. Yeah. You know, we're grateful for you today. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's it's those kind of things, you know, uh, uh, and also people have to also realize you still have to get your asking gear. If you don't ask, you're that far from the yes or no. Yeah. Um, yes, this is disappointing to ask all the time. It can be fearful for some people, but I'd rather know the yes or no, like we talked about earlier. Right. And I'm grateful for all the people that have, have taken the chance when we asked and said yes. And what's even more grateful, they're still our clients and friends today. That's, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we need to think about, too, uh, although we don't want, uh, you know, an eight or ten month period of downtime to think about things. As uh, business people, sometimes we get in this habit of just running and gunning all the time. And uh, yeah. but what some things that I've read in the past is that we actually need that break in our schedule with some mind uh, being able to take some uh, mindful time for us to spur on the creativity. And so, uh, you know, even when we get through this. It's really good, and, and y'all can speak more from the creative aspect, but it's good to have that downtime to sit and actually think about things. Oh, yeah. Um, this has been our time that just actually people should be working on their branding, uh, yeah. getting uh, interviews like we're doing with you today. Right. Um, they should be moving that dial forward to make their business happen because there's a lot of people that are big business that are not moving their dials as fast as all business entrepreneur can right and so it, it's leverage time right now right. This, this gives you the ultimate time to get yourself in the best magazines to get yourself seated in a situation that a lot of people eyeballs on your business and brand development right. time for new product like and services um this is the perfect time right because you're going 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 sometimes you just don't have the time to do that but now that you do think about some of the new product lines and services you can um, networks, look for strategic partnerships that maybe you don't have that might introduce your product or service to a new uh, consumer um, client elevate. Um, all kinds of things that you can be doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. And I will even say, right now, um, uh, for us, we've we had challenges, uh, certainly the Great Recession now with COVID. We actually go back and look at our balance sheet, our profit and loss sheet, 
and we look at what what is doing well in terms of making money and what is not we actually track the lines and said okay this isn't working anymore for whatever reason we yeah. need to focus it on going to a new direction with the product a new service right and for small businesses like don said we can do that pretty quickly yeah. and well, uh, during the Great Recession, while a lot of our um, friends, our friends who own businesses, went down meeting planners, they just couldn't, you know, they couldn't keep it running. We actually kept it up and kept moving forward as a result of that. We learned to streamline and focus on what was making the most income for us, and we honed in on that and made that the, the bigger brand. Right. And it became the number one brand, which, you know, was even more important. We found out something ourselves that we didn't know, and we've been able to you know, uh, generate on that every year and change it, modify it, and make it better. Right. So we talked about generating companies thought before, but I'll tell you, as a small business owner, leadership or large corporate, you've got to know your numbers. You have to know your numbers and you need to be comfortable with your numbers. Because numbers, generally speaking, go a lot if you're being honest with yourself. Right. And that really can help you get some good, good decisions. Yeah. Yeah, actually, because a lot of people don't know their break even point. Yeah. Uh, for them to make an ROI. Yeah, you know, and I've I talked about this a little before. I worked with a client years ago that in his business, you know, I asked him, well, why do you charge this rate? It's like, well, because it's $5 less than what my competitor charges. I'm like, yeah, but do you know what costs that you have going into this? Are you making money? Are you losing money? Not a clue. And so, you know, sitting down with somebody trying to say, okay, how much time does it cost to deliver? What are the costs of the supplies? You know, trying to walk through this whole process. A lot of people just think, uh, you know, my competitor charges uh, X number of dollars, so we'll just be a few dollars under it and we'll be good. But, you know, if you're the other thing you have to think about, I think, is the value. If you're delivering uh, a lot more value than this guy, then you can charge more. You know, we don't. Well, my opinion is we don't always want to be the uh, always want to win on price. You know, we want to win on yeah. value because if you're if people are only buying for you price only, there'll always be somebody coming along cheaper than you, and you'll lose out. So add that value. So true. Always. So yeah. true. And and look, I mean, luxury brands are called luxury brands for a reason. They right. denote quality. Right. So think about you're talking about positioning. Think about the positioning of your product. It, it more than likely is probably a not not a low end product. Right. You know, it could be anywhere between higher or even um, uh, medium high. So yeah. definitely take that into consideration. Yeah. yeah, you'll find if there's a if there's demand there, you'll be able to find it. And if it's a quality product, people will actually look down on it and not want to buy it if you've got a lower price oftentimes because it might yeah. denote to them, you know, a lower quality. Yeah, right. That's exactly. why understanding analytics, things like that today. I mean, it's much more than just knowing what your brand is. There's a lot more to it now. Right. And you have to be willing to take those certificates, take those programs yeah. uh, to teach yourself, especially if you're your own entrepreneur by yourself. It, it, you're basically investing in yourself and your brand and your business. Right, right, right. So many tools out there as a result of technology that, that you can use yep. you know, yep. and modify and based on the size of your business. And we talk about that in our workshops, our breakouts. Uh, and make sure that people understand it and how it works and operates. And I think that's the important part that we're not famous, like Dina said, but we have run a successful business for over 31 years. Yeah. That's a well-known brand. And we're ambassadors of goodwill. And we even have a monument. Who would have thought You're, that? Exactly. And we had a lot doing that. We've had so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to uh, be with us. And uh, if you don't mind, just a question for each one of you is, uh, so what is a tool, a habit, a ritual? What is something that you do either in your personal life or your business life every day that you just couldn't do without? I'm a very disciplined person. That's, that makes me feel good. So for me, it's scheduling and making sure that I know what on uh, today, a week out, and even a month out. But for me, it's my schedule. Okay. It really helps me to keep everything so much all the time, and I'm still teaching. Um, so it's important for me to make sure that my schedule, that I'm on top of my schedule. That okay. really helps me yep. a lot. Yep. That's very true. I mean, the first thing we do is get up and have coffee together. We basically have a meeting about how we're doing things for the day, the month, the week. You know, um, how yeah. is, even if this, this day we're going to do this day, how many meetings do we have? 
because everybody's zooming right now. Right, right. So uh, and speaking in those terms. So that's that's the most important thing. Having consistency of us being good And I think he's on because um, he got sales every day. Every day he's on the phone, even with the he's making those phone calls. So the I know. Game. Yeah, he tapped into your CRM. He taps into our CRM. I watch him do it every day. Yeah. So. That's an important tool too. It's a habit. Yep. And it's a good habit. And and uh, as you know, being an entrepreneur, if the phone's not ringing, there's something wrong. Exactly. So, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to ring. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, uh, thank y'all. If you don't mind, tell everybody if they want to pick up a copy of the book, what is the best way to do that? Or if they want to reach out and uh, talk to y'all, uh, how's the best way to contact y'all? So you can find the book, 31 Cent to hardcore tips for increasing profits and you can find that on Amazon it's um, a paperback book and it's Audible just came out we have a fantastic voice actor that did a wonderful job but if you like to listen great stuff great. Um, you can also go to our website ceospeak.com uh, or the Dino Preston Band Preston Band and or uh, for anyone interested in uh, reaching out to us directly you can certainly call on yeah, you can call me at 623-330-0267. Look forward to hearing from you, answering your questions, or even come speak at your uh, your Zoom meeting or anything else you got coming up. Yeah. All Great right. Thank all you right. so much. Yeah, thank you all very much. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Business of Business podcast. You can find us at www.thebusinessofbusinesspodcast. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and Spotify. Be sure and share uh, uh, Don and Dina's incredible story with your friends. Everybody needs to hear this and uh, go out and pick up 31 cents to 43 countries. Until next time, thank you very much.